so I got the Mafex Superman a little set up here and uh, I'm really liking how this turned out. I am using the Bald Eagle from the G.I. Joe Classified Spirit Iron Knife figure. I've used some tack to just kind of uh, put it right on his arm, just like right underneath his uh, talons right there. It's been kind of a pain in the ass to get that like on there and staying on there. Uh, it's kind of just being held on by a thread right here, but so far over the last 20 or 25 minutes it's stayed on there and I had to put a little bit of tack behind his head because I didn't like how, his, how the bird's head was looking to the right, so I uh, kind of put some tack on there and had the, uh, the bald eagle's head kind of facing the camera a little bit. And then I initially had Superman looking at the camera, but I think it just makes more sense for him to be looking at the bald eagle. This is obviously inspired by The Dark Knight Returns. I think there's a part where uh, Clark's talking to Bruce and a bald eagle just like randomly shows up and lands on Bruce on uh, Clark's arm. And uh, you know, I had both of the figures and it just made sense to kind of showcase how cool this figure is and to have a bald eagle, because let, let's be honest, if a bald eagle is to land on any superhero, it'd either be Superman or Captain America. And obviously we got Superman right here. I also played around with the cape a little bit. I wanted it kind of fluttering in the wind. And uh, I've never had too much, like, too many good experiences with like the wired capes and getting them to flow just the right way. But I looked up a couple reference photos and I think I, did a pretty good job of kind of, you know, selling the fact that it's blowing in the wind, so I like how that turned out. The base and everything is actually a re really simple setup. We got just a little sky background. I think I got this from Michaels. And then the actual base that he's standing on, this like green rock base, is, I think it's from uh, the Ray, or maybe it was a Luke Skywalker Black Series figure from uh, The Last Jedi, which is the worst movie that's ever been made, by the way. And uh, I just kind of sat him right on top of that. And then these pieces right here are just uh, the Tamashi Nation's rocks effect, rock effects. Or actually, I don't even know if those are the Tamashi Nation ones. Those might be like the generic cheap ones. But hey, they work. And it looks good. And overall, I'm very happy with how this came out. So yeah, let's check it out. All right, so I'm still playing around with this. Mafex Superman figure and I'm, I'm really loving it. I, I really love what Mafex has done with these uh, Dark Knight Returns figures. I think they're probably the best figures they've ever made and this Superman is just incredible. Uh, so it's gotten me going through the library in my mind of like all the different the Dark Knight return shots I can do with Superman and Batman and there actually isn't really that many shots you can do. Obviously they had the battle at the end of The Dark Knight Returns, uh, so obviously my mind immediately goes there, so I wanted to take something that's kind of straight out of the book or straight out of the cartoon, by the way that cartoon is just like one of the greatest animated movies of all time with Peter Weller voicing Batman and everything, uh, R.I.P. Kevin Conroy of course, uh, but yeah, I, I, so I immediately went to this, this is the part where he has the he has like his little uh, electrical box, he attaches it to the lamp post, and then he electrocutes Superman, which pretty much does nothing to Superman, but it's really just to stall him while, you know, Batman's trying to uh, fill out the rest of his plan, but uh, I wanted to do something like this. Uh, luckily, this uh, Mafex Batman Dark Knight Returns armored Batman figure is extremely poseable, and I was able to really get his shoulders out and in so I could have his arms doing like that cupping motion with his hands uh, around Superman's head. And then another technique I used here, uh, hopefully it, it shows up, unfortunately the the electrical, this little electrical uh, effect right here is kind of blending in with Superman's suit, uh, but uh, hopefully that stands out a little bit and people get an idea of him, he's being electrocuted. Uh, but uh, what the trick I was uh, referring to is uh, the old black light. I bought a black light a long time ago. I think somebody in the grind, which is where we uh, post all our pictures to get feedback uh, before we post them to ACBA, had mentioned that if you get a black uh, light, you can actually really light up these effects better than you could if you actually shined a light directly on them. So uh, I have a black light in here. I don't know if you guys will be able to. Let me see if I can maneuver it. Uh, down here so it's just a black light it's nothing nothing crazy I kind of have it like Jimmy rigged to 
<laughs> go on the stand here so I didn't have to hold it while I took the shot. But if you can see without the light, you can see the effect kind of stands out a little bit more, but it looks like a little bit powered down. But the minute you move the black light in there, you can kind of see it shine up a little bit more. And I think it has a better effect when I'm actually taking the shot as opposed to the video right here. So it's a cool little trick. I think Diego, uh, uh, gave me that idea to uh, do something with the black light. So it's always good. I don't really use it that many times, uh, that much. I've only used it like maybe once or twice, but it's always good to have on hand in instances like this when, you know, you don't ha really have a lot of room to work with, but you need to light up an effect. And it kind of worked out because I'm able to light up the effect from above. And it doesn't really, the black light doesn't really affect the overall tone of the photo or the, the um, composition too much. It doesn't like shine like this crazy purple light on the whole figure. It just really does what it's supposed to do and light up the effect. So I think that worked out really well here. We've got a little bit of, I really love this scene I've, I've created here. In the comics, you know, there's actually not that much snow on the ground when these two are fighting, but in the cartoon, uh, there's actually quite a, I think the whole floor is just covered in snow and, you know, I'm, I'm using like this, uh, this like fake snow, I think it's actually called fake snow from Michaels or Hobby Lobby or one of those, so, uh, you know, it's, it's cool to work with, but I really just didn't want to coat the entire scene in it because it's just a, a pain in the ass to clean up, so overall I'm very happy with it and I finally got to use my little, uh, fake lamppost. I haven't got to use that yet. So yeah, this is a really cool shot. Let's check it out. All right. So I kind of got like a little spur of the moment shot here. I was just kind of playing around with this figure and trying to figure out what else I wanted to shoot with it. Uh, Cause you know, there's tons of different little options and like scenarios and stuff I wanted to shoot him with, but you know, more often than not that I notice is sometimes I'll just like have a idea in the moment and I just run with it. So this is an idea I had just in the moment. Uh, uh, the idea was just him holding a Marvel comic. I was looking for uh, a comic. This is like a cutout, so it's not like actually a real um, like prop cutout or anything, but I had one that was full cover. So it's a full cover. It's got the back cover and the front cover. It's a Wolverine comic. It's just a cutout, just glued to poster board and bent. And uh, I just thought it would be funny if Superman was sitting on top of this uh, lovely new diorama that I purchased and he was reading it. And then I started thinking about like, what would Superman say if he was reading the Marvel comic? Uh, and uh, I was just thinking of like funny things he would say. I like doing things with superheroes that are, I like putting a caption that I know the superhero would never say. You know, Superman's like, him and Captain America, they've got to be like the two most wholesome superheroes of all time. So Superman would never say anything like crazy off the cuff. So I'm thinking the caption should probably be something like Marvel Comics. Man, this shit is trash. I just think it'd be funny to have a caption of Superman saying that because we all know he would never say anything like that. So I just think it would be funnier if he was saying something like really rude or just not to his character. I just I just think that's funny. And he's also reading a Marvel comic. It's kind of like universes colliding type stuff. You know, you don't really see, I don't see a lot of people playing around with that too much in, in uh, uh, you know, ACBA and uh, toy photography where, you know, worlds colliding different um, fandoms uh, inter interchanged or with different setups and stuff like that. So I think it's kind of fun every now and again to kind of like jump that fourth wall and and have, you know, Superman reading a Marvel comic or, or something like that. Anyways, that was just my idea behind it. Like I said, it was spur of the moment. I thought it was funny in the moment. And I knew I had all the pieces to put it together and, and make it look cool. Anyways, let's talk about this shot. Uh, like I said, we're using this new diorama. It's actually the top of a rooftop. All right, so I guess you can't really see, but it's just like a rooftop. Uh, it, obviously, it was intended for the the pink skulls from Mezco, I'm guessing. Uh, I don't really collect too many Mezco stuff. and eh, You know, Mezco does a great job with their figures. I do have quite a few 112 scale Mezcos, but anyways, we're not talking about that. I could, I could talk about that for a minute. Uh, but yeah, so this diorama is awesome. It's a rooftop. It's got this like little, you know, staircase entrance right here. And I just thought of sitting him on top of that. And then obviously behind him, uh, the framing is going to be a little bit tighter, so it's going to be more like right here. But he's got, that's actually a picture of Metropolis. I think I pulled that from a Superman comic way 
like a year back and it's printed on an 11 by 17 poster and it just kind of fits back there pretty nicely. Now, if you're looking at this, obviously this is in the a much wider aspect ratio, but when I kind of, um, you know, make it a little bit narrower, it'll all fit and it'll all be contained and it'll all look just right. Uh, that's the only problem working with these 11 by 17 posters is, you know, you have a very small area to work with. But if you just kind of maneuver some stuff and play around with it and take enough pictures with them, you know how to make them seem a lot bigger than they actually are. So even though we're only just going to be showing like pretty much this much of it, you kind of get the illusion that, oh, there's a whole city behind them. There's, you know, there's lots of stuff going on behind behind them. And, you know, and honestly, it's there's not really too much dis distance between the Superman figure and this uh, this poster board back here. I can just kind of touch it. It's maybe about 10 inches away from Superman, but I'm working with such a low f-stop that it kind of blurs it out and makes it seem like it's a lot further away than it actually is. I also got to make sure you put a lot of light on it. I'm working with one of these lights right here. If you guys can see, I've got it. I don't want to get it too close because if I get it too close, you can see all that glare that starts hitting the, the actual uh, background and it washes it out. So it's got, got to be a little bit further back maybe sometimes play around with the position of the light, get it just right, you just gotta make sure the light's hitting it, but it's not like super bright, super focused on the actual background. You just wanna kinda get this nice medium, pull it a little bit further away. If you're always having trouble, if you're having trouble with your lighting and stuff just seems like it's either a little washed out or it's too bright or it's overexposed, you know, play around with the positions of the lights as opposed to playing around with your camera settings first. So I'll do that a lot. Uh, because if you play with your camera settings, you may just get, you know, the wrong composition or tone that you're going for. Sometimes you just got to move the lights around and then sometimes it's vice versa, you know. So it's just a, it's kind of just playing around with what you're working with and just getting that nice medium to where you're happy with how your, your photo looks. You know, I went with kind of a sunnier scene, even though it doesn't seem like it's too sunny, they kind of played with the exposure so that the lights come out a little bit more yellow than they normally would. Anyways, this is a funny shot. At least I think it's funny. Hopefully you guys think it's funny too. Obviously Superman would never say this shit. It's just I have not had a, this cool of a Superman figure and God, I, I can't even remember when. I can't think of any other Superman figures that I've liked as much as this one. So I'm just kind of going through and just taking all the fun little photos or anything that comes pops up into my mind and just running with it. I'm just having fun with this. And, and thank God I... Uh, printed out all these metropolis backgrounds in anticipation probably for this figure so that now I can uh, finally get around to having some fun with them so awesome figure like I said a couple times before I'm, I'm really liking this figure I also forgot to film the last last shot I took I'll, I'll show you guys that shot right here I was I was really digging this shot uh, the Superman on the water this is actually one of the first Superman shots I ever thought of actually doing with this figure so finally got around to taking that shot but I didn't film anything for it uh, but it was a really fun shot. I really had a lot of fun, but uh, yeah. All right, so we're still on the roll with these uh, Dark Knight Returns Superman Mafex uh, shots. And uh, this is one that I was just kind of like perusing Google, looking up like reference photos. And, you know, Superman has, you know, historically always been bulletproof so I figured why not let's try out something kind of cool with you know some effects some cutouts and see if we can get the framing just right and uh, have it look like Superman's just getting mangled with gunfire but he's obviously just standing there tough uh, because you know he can't be penetrated by any of those uh, bullets and we're working with a lot of cutouts here I initially made these like little um, uh, ricochet or uh, effects for the bullet fire and I just kind of pasted those onto or I tacked them onto the Superman there. They were from a Wolverine comic uh, where Wolverine was getting hit with a bunch of gunfire and I just kind of cut them out. You know, it took a little bit of time. I had to edge them with a marker, but I think you kind of get the idea of, uh, you know, it's he's repelling gunfire. And then I was looking through my cutout stash and I found a cutout that had these blam um, sound effects uh, 
in a row and I just kind of cut them out individually and just pasted them onto him. And I think this came out pretty cool, you know, I don't work with a lot of space for my setup so everything's got to be real tight and it's got to be like monitored very closely as far as the focus and everything. So obviously Superman here is the focus. I wanted a little bit higher than normal uh, f-stop to make sure I got all of those cutouts in focus because they kind of are at different lengths from each other. They're not all like on an even parallel. They're, they're kind of like, you know, half an inch back from each other. Or a couple of them are. So I want to make sure everything was in focus, but I also had to make sure that these two goons I got here were also somewhat in focus so you could see their guns and see that there was gunfire coming from them. And then I also kind of had to situate them in a way that, you know, their guns and their muzzle flashes weren't covering any of the cutouts I have on display. Like you can see this guy right here, his muzzle flash is covering that um, effect peak effect cut out on Superman so I just want to angle him in a position to where he's not covering any of the cutouts but you can still clearly see him so in order to achieve that we had to go with a little bit higher than usual f-stop and then all at the same time while trying to figure out that uh, focus for the front figures and the back figure I also want to make sure that my background is not super in focus it's actually more in focus than I normally roll with uh, but I think it's all right. This is another 11 by 17, just comic book picture that I just pasted back there. Like it's like a warehouse or something like that. So I think this came out pretty cool, man. I, I am just loving this figure. It's just so much fun to play around with this figure. So many cool, iconic Superman shots that I've just been wanting to do for so long. I just ne could never find the right figure to do them. You know, McFarlane, I don't really, I have maybe like five or six McFarlane figures in my entire collection and I always just find them kind of hard to work with. I don't really like how the articulation flows or anything like that. But at the same time, I also don't really buy too many import figures, but the, like I've stated a million times, the Dark Knight Returns, I, I love it. So I had to shell out for this Superman. And honestly, I think this is probably the best Superman figure I've ever owned. And uh, I am really loving it. I know he doesn't fit in with... You know, he's not like a classic Superman for, uh, you know, all the different comics he's been in. But he works for me. I'll make it, I'll make it work. Uh, he is a little bit bulkier than most Supermen. Uh, and he's a little bit older in this comic. So you kind of just got to play with, play around with it and make it work for you. But at the end of the day, he's a Superman figure. And I think it works pretty well. So I'm really digging this shot. I'm really loving all these effect pieces. I'm loving the focus I kind of figured out for... Uh, or like the good medium between the front figures, the back figures, the, the background, and lots of different lights. I think I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine lights for this whole setup. And we're talking about maybe two feet from the front of the camera to the, the, the back wall there. So lots of figuring out, lots of finagling, but I've been in this setup for so long, I just kind of know where everything needs to be for the most part. So yeah, fun little setup. Let's check this out. All right, here we got my finale for my uh, Dark Knight Returns Superman figure. Uh, obviously, I really like this figure. As you can tell, I've got this gigantic cutout of the Daily Planet, and I was kind of going for the vibe from Superman Returns when he catches the Daily Planet and lands like in the middle of the city. And this one went through a couple iterations. I uh, originally had less people in the uh, background of it, uh, but I added some more people and changed the position and positions and uh, moved Superman a little bit closer to the camera. I, I put this post on the grind, which is like uh, where you get all your feedback before you post to ACPA. There's lots of great artists over there. So they gave me quite a bit of feedback on this one and I applied it. But a couple other people were mentioning that the building background was kind of blending in with the cutout, which I agree it kind of is a little bit. So I tried to move it as, as closer to the camera as I could, as close to the camera as I could. And uh, I think it stands out uh, better than it did initially. Uh, but I may be reshooting this in, with like more minimalist uh, background scenery, maybe just like the sky and maybe a cityscape, him landing in a field, 
I'm not really too sure how I feel about that just yet after just, uh, you know, putting all of this up and uh, kind of uh, moving stuff around and everything like that. So I may do that. It depends on how I feel. I don't know if I'll, I'll do that today, but uh, I do like how this came out. I like how uh, it's all being held up. You guys can't really see too much of that Daily Planet, but it's, it's pretty big and uh, it's being held on by one of my LED light uh, desk lamp things so with some sticky tack so uh, it was kinda hard to get that Superman in that pose to really have him sell him holding it up and everything like that so overall I'm really happy with uh, this shot like I said I may switch it up because uh, I really I really want to do this one justice like I just I just really want this one to come out as a banger big time so if that means switching it up and changing the basically the entire scenery uh, I, I will do that but uh, I, I wanna see what some of the people think about this shot first before I do that so uh, yeah let's check out the final shot